Hi, welcome to this series of videos about mass collaboration. This video is the first in a series of five. Um, it's an introduction to mass collaboration. So this covers material in chapter five of Bit by Bit. So the idea of mass collaboration for me is really beautifully illustrated by Wikipedia. So I love Wikipedia. It's just an amazing thing that so many volunteers have been able to produce this encyclopedia that's freely available to everyone in the world. But one of the interesting things about Wikipedia is that it didn't require any new knowledge to create. All the information that was needed to create Wikipedia already existed. What was needed was a new form of collaboration, a form of collaboration that was enabled by the digital age. And so projects like Wikipedia should make us ask, what are other big intellectual problems that we might be able to solve if we had new forms of collaboration? Problems where all the information we might need to solve them might already exist. And so if we take Wikipedia as an inspiration, we can start to think about mass collaboration and scientific research. So what I'm calling mass collaboration pulls in ideas from a bunch of related areas. It's, this is sometimes called crowdsourcing. It's sometimes called citizen science, it's sometimes called collective intelligence. There's a bunch of related research communities that all kind of overlap with each other a little bit. So I like to think about um, mass collaboration as falling into three main categories. And this categorization scheme is one that I developed in thinking about how these might be used in social research. So for people in other fields, you may end up organizing mass collaboration in different ways. But for social research, I think there's kind of three main buckets of things. The first is what I would call human computation projects. And in these projects, you have uh, a really big task is split up and distributed to lots of people doing relatively simple micro tasks. Then those micro tasks, uh, then that work that those people do is then combined to produce an overall uh, answer or data set. The second kind of problem, and, and human computation projects are often projects that in the past you might have thought about giving to undergraduate research assistants. So the second kind of big bucket of mass collaboration projects is what I call open calls. So open calls are different from human computation projects because um, it may not even be clear to the researcher how to solve these problems. These are problems that in the past you might have asked a colleague for help. So the idea is you ask a very specific question of a certain form where uh, it's possible for you to check all the answers uh, and, and see whether they're right. And then you send out this problem to many people, hopefully many people send you back proposed solutions. You check all of the solutions and see which one works the best. So the third uh, type of mass collaboration uh, is what I call distributed data collection. And here you send have uh, volunteers out in the world collecting new measurements of the world and sending those measurements back to you. And so uh, each of these buckets has uh, examples of projects uh, in them. And in the next series of videos, I'll tell you a little bit about these examples to help illustrate what I think are the exciting opportunities in each of these three areas. So I've noticed that many researchers are skeptical of the idea of mass collaboration. That is, they think, well, should we really be involving these other people in our research? How do we know? that this is really gonna work. It's just something that's not very common in social science yet. So I think it's important to remember that the guiding idea behind these mass collaborations is that we should think of the other people that we're working with as collaborators and not cogs in a big wheel, that, that a big machine. Um, and I think ornithology and astronomy are both fields that are exemplars in having this kind of collaboration a mass collaboration and in part that's due to the nature of the field. So for example, ornithology is the study of birds. If you want to study bird migration patterns, then it's pretty clear no one researcher can do that. It requires the collaboration of people over very wide geographic areas to be able to take these measurements and share them. And so both in ornithology and astronomy, there are traditions hundreds of years long of these kinds of scientific mass collaborations often involving the public. And I think those can be uh, an inspiration to us as social researchers. 
So again, I said many people are skeptical of mass collaboration initially because again, in part, there's not a strong tradition of this in the social sciences. So I think what I'd like to do is take some of the questions that I've heard and then try to rephrase them a little bit into what I think might be a better question. So one is, is this really research? And here I think the better question is, does this enable new research? Is this perfect? I think a better question is, is this better than what we can do without mass collaboration? Is this impossible? I think a better question is, is this possible? So that's a brief introduction into mass collaboration. And then in the next three videos, I'll give you examples uh, about from human computation, examples from open call, and examples from distributed data collection. Then in the fifth video, I'll talk about a specific open call that I've worked on called the Fragile Families Challenge. Thank you.